What's up guys, it's Alexander, obviously. I am back, I have this a short review of some choreography. Topic of Periscope, felt like talking about it, so we're talking about it. That's essentially how I do any topic, because I feel like it. How to maximize learning, case studies. So what is a case study? I'm gonna make this a very generalistic definition for you guys. A case study is quite simply where you take an individual or a company or a situation and you break it down into its constituent parts. You analyze it, you use the scientific method maybe if you want to. You see what the context is. You analyze the history of the situation, how it arose, you know, how it developed, who the players are involved, uh, who, who are the players involved. Uh, you know, you analyze the qualities of development and you basically just, you just take something or someone and you try to categorize it and look at it with a, like I said, a continuum based perspective and then you learn from it. That's what a case study is. A case study, you know, in clinical practice is, you know, you have a patient and the patient had a medical condition and you essentially list out the patient's, their health history and how they got this condition and what the treatment was and how it was solved or not solved. That's a case study. And, you know, a case study is something that I don't know what people deem things this way necessarily, since most people don't think this way, but case studies are what you've been doing your entire life learning from other people. You watch people, you see how they behave, you see how they act, and you're able to infer and intuit stuff from that because we are creatures of habit, we are creatures of observation, and we are creatures that are designed to recognize patterns. And the reason I bring up case studies is because a lot of you guys ask very often, how can I learn? You know, I've, I've said before that you can you can train anything. Anything can be trained. Any, anything can be trained, which is true. Um, you know, intelligence can be trained. Well, you can't raise your IQ. No, you can't raise your IQ, but you can certainly take the intelligence that you have and you can sharpen it, you can hone it, you can still learn different ways to think. It's not as if having a high, high IQ gives you with knowledge. It just makes you, you know, better able to acquire it because you can think faster, typically speaking. But case studies are an example where if you want to study something, let's say like online marketing, or you want to study fitness, you can take someone take an individual and you can try to study what they have done and what they have practiced and what they have preached, what they have promoted. You, you can look at the continuation of their development and then you can extract lessons from that. You know, much of my learning, I said this, is that, you know, myself, to use myself as an example, I'm not someone that really asks questions. I don't ask questions very much. Very, very rarely do I ask questions. If I'm asking questions, it's either, if I'm asking questions, they are first order questions in which I want to know the foundational aspects of something and I will phrase it that way. But otherwise I learn by, yes, I, I learn by observation. I will watch people, I watch things very, very, very closely. You know, to use an example, uh, they'd probably be familiar to me, perhaps many of you guys, as we have a share of your audience, Mike Cernovich. You know, I've been following Mike since 2013. Yeah, 2013. I've seen Mike's website go from being him just posting you know, his thoughts, which are, you know, obviously very nuanced and detailed and well-developed, but I've seen Mike's website go from him posting this stuff, his life, his experiences. You know, I've read his blog, um, you know, the, the law blog he had. You know, I watched Danger and Play go from being this personal website in 2013 to 2014, where, you know, now he's trying to, you know, really grow the audience for the website. He's learning SEO. He's learning how to write good articles. You know, then I've watched it in 2014-15 when he really took off. He published the book. You know, then I've watched, I've watched his career, so to speak, his brand evolve over the years. And you can do this with anyone or anything. Like I said, it's very, it's broad, it's universally applicable. You can buy a book on the history of a company, uh, Ford, you know, Ford Automotive. You can read autobiographies about people. Which autobiographies? Anybody and anything that interests you. You can read autobiographies, you can study quite late, you can study history, since that's what a case study is. You can study the history of something, and then, like I said, you can learn profound life lessons, you can learn principles, you can learn perhaps what you should be doing by learning what other people have done before you. Online right now, some of you guys have followed me for the last two years, you've seen me go from a thousand followers to 25,000 followers. You've seen how I've changed, you know, what I talk about, you've seen how I've changed what I share, you've seen how I've changed, you know, having the email list and how I promote that. You've been able to study all this and I'm a case study in how to take a business and go from zero to one. You know, and, I, and I don't claim to show you how to make a million dollars. I I claim that, hey, look, I grew a list. I grew a following. Here's how I did it. 
the past, you know, 16 months. You know, that's using myself as an example. But if you think like a scientist, as one of you said, right. you can you can learn from the whole world. The whole world is study for you. There is nothing that you cannot learn from. You know, learning is a superpower. You know, if you think of learning that aspect where anything can be studied, anything can be observed, anything you know essentially offers lessons in that way, then there's no limit to what you can. There's no limit to the knowledge you can acquire. There might be limitations to what you are capable of, since we're not all equal in that regards. But there's certainly no limitations that there are certainly there are no, there are no limitations to human knowledge, in the sensibility that anyone can learn for forever. There's not a cap to that. There's not a cap to that. And the more knowledge that you acquire, the more the more and better able you are and equipped to you know do whatever it is you want to do, whether that's online business, whether that's you know having your own brand, whether that's whether that's working for somebody else, have your own company, you know going into some particular field, whether it's a professional field or non-professional field. It doesn't matter. I realize for a lot of you, you guys think too small. You, know, you ask these questions, you know, what's the best books I should read? You need to go out and live life. Are books important? Yes, absolutely. But my most powerful learning, it hasn't come from just books. It's not just books. It's not that I decide, oh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to read a book. I look at what other people are doing respective to what I want to do. I reverse engineer it backwards you know, and see where they start, where they are today. And then I, like I said... I take from that, what can I apply to myself? And that mental processes, those mental models, those are available to any of you. That's not exclusive to myself. It's not exclusive to anybody. Learning is not exclusive to anyone. Yet learning is how you think. Learning is a superpower. If you believe you can learn from anything, if you believe everything has something worth learning, and not all things do necessarily, but again, it's heuristic. It's not an app. I'm not speaking literally. If you adopt that as your way of being, and you adopt that as your mode of perception, as you know, as your paradigm of approach, you adopt that. You adopt, you adopt that as your, you know, the model of your perspectives. Then, what's the cap? You know, where are the boundaries? There aren't any. And, that, and that's what case studies are. Case studies are just taking the history of things and learning from the history. So, if you have things that you want to do for yourself, fitness, you want to unfat yourself. Okay, well. Let me find people who have successfully done that for themselves. What did they do? They started managing their environment. They started following a low-carb diet. They changed their friends. Uh, you know, they went to the gym and started training. You know, these are seemingly obvious things, but they are overlooked because far too many of us, far too many of you, who study things in the singular. You want to think, you want everything to be A and B, and that's not how anything is. You know, the most subjects in life. They are A to, Z, A to Z subjects, A to Z subjects, and then they have you know a few key principles to them that you need to pick up on. And principles other than themselves are universal. You know the way that you can study history is the same way that you would study you know a person that you're analyzing you know for a, the same way that you study history is the same way that you psychologically you know, analyze somebody and profile them. You know a, a therapist that has a new patient, what do they do? They gotta get their history. All right, tell me about your childhood. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about how you got here. If you want to study a business, business case studies. How was this company started? Who started it? What were their reasons for doing so? What's the product they offer? How did it change over the years? You want to study how to be a doctor? Okay, well, what do doctors need to do? You just reverse engineer. That's, this is obvious stuff. I need to go to school. I need to study these subjects. I need to have these skill sets. How do I go about acquiring them? Well, you have to go do them. You have to go do them. You have to go learn them. You have to put them into practice. And you can see people every day online, especially within the, you know, the sphere that you know, we kind of have on Twitter, You know, whether you want to call it the self-improvement sphere, the mastery sphere, the mana sphere. You see people growing their brands on the daily. What are they doing? How are they doing that? They're interacting with people. They're putting out content. You know, they have a persona that they present you know, as to who they are. They have personality. I myself have shared my model many times over. It's not a complicated model. It can be prolific, it can be polarized, it can be personal, be personal, the scorched earth approach. Go all out on whatever platform you are on. There's no, there's not a there's not a secret sauce to that. <laughs> at, least I don't, at least I don't think there is. You know, some of you that message me in regards to you know how can I build my brand? Who are you? What are you about? What do you have to offer people? And then you just share that to the absolute maximum. Whatever that is. Now, what, why do companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising? 
they have the because people have to be aware of them. People have to know who you are. They have to know what it is that the company is selling. Why do companies pay millions of dollars for Super Bowl ads? You know, what's the conversion on that? I really don't know the conversion, but I certainly know that it's worthwhile because you're getting you know millions upon millions of eyes looking at what your brand product, you know, sales service is. You know, everything is advertisement, everything is a sale. If you want to, especially for those of you guys that aspire to have personal brands, if you want to have a personal brand, you have to be promoting yourself all the time within some respective niche. How do you do that? Look at people who are already doing it. What self-defense class have you had the most fun with? Um, I don't know if I can really pick one, honestly. Um, I, I, I love rolling. I, I love wrestling. Wrestling is fun as hell. Uh, I love boxing. I love Muay Thai. I love, I love hard sparring. I, I couldn't say if there's one that is... Uh, you know, near and dear and has a special place in my heart. I do like to kick. You know, that's why I like to Muay Thai so much. I'm, I'm very, you know, I have, a lot of guys are very awkward with the lower body. Most most guys don't, can't kick. Most guys can't kick. Most guys can't throw knees. They don't have the flexibility or the, you know, the hip action to be able to do that. I do, so, you know, that, you know, perhaps that, I could say that's my favorite. Do you like, uh, do, do, yeah, yeah, Gandhi Eagle Vulcan. I love that guy. Great, great, great fighter. Great fighter. Uh, excellent example of how precision and timing beats, uh, you know, speed and, you know, let us say, agility. He's not the most physically gifted per se, but he has honed his fighting instincts to a razor's edge. Very impressive guy. Very impressive fighter. Any questions on this, guys? Are you excited for his fight May 5th? Yeah, I'm definitely excited. Definitely be watching that. I, I, I thought he won the last fight by, like, a very thin margin. Um, yeah, personal opinion. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that fight. Questions, ladies and gentlemen, just open for QA. No, maybe so, people. No questions or no questions? You got questions? Ask. Are you Spanish, Mexican, Jew? Ever thought of doing competitive martial arts? Uh, yeah, I have, but... You know, ballet is my number one thing, and that is the obsession. What is the minimum effective dose for long distance running? Uh, that depends upon what long distance is for you and your fitness level. Long distance running could be two miles if you're really out of shape. Um, it could also be ten miles. Yeah, but that, that, that's, high, that's a context question. How far do you want to be able to run? If you want to be able to run a marathon, you're going to have to run longer distances. Um, you know, if you just want to be able to run, you know, four or five, six miles, you can run two miles three times a week, and that can suffice. So that really, that, that really, really varies. Anything else, guys and girls? Before affecting strength, athletic goals. Uh, that also depends. That depends upon, like I said, your fitness level, what your training is, how long you've been training, and uh, really like all the factors that would go with that. Uh, that it's not a yes/no answer. Some people can do. I, I know people that are you know triathletes where they're actually very fit and they run you know upwards of you know in the double digits miles a week, but they carry a lot of muscle. Um, I also know people obviously that are triathletes and they can benefit from strength training. So you know the point at which it has negative returns or negatively affects that. Going to come down to the athlete in question. I'm going to come down, like I said, to your training history. It's going to come down to what you can recover from. That's that's a critical factor with that. You can only train so much. You know, from most, well, I see most people. You know, a person in very excellent, excellent, you know, shape, fitness-wise, you can train, let's say, three, four hours a day, not doing the same thing, but doing you know somewhat different things. Uh, you know, you have to. That, that, that's it requires. It requires managing multiple modalities of training. 
Do you go to your clients? Do your clients go to you? My clients come to me. I don't train clients anymore, really, unless people want to drive out, fly out to see me. Um, you know, I charge two fifty an hour for training, so you know, I don't do anything less than three hour sessions uh, for new clients, since I have to get go through a whole intake process and see where they're at and teach them the, the principles. And after that, if they want to have sessions where they, you know, come up to see me, they're for, they're you know they're free to. But you know, the majority of what I do now is seminar sessions where it's a three hour session. And obviously that's not cheap. I ask because I'm bulking and training for a mini marathon. That's two conflicting goals. You can gain muscle mass and certainly improve your cardiovascular capacity. You need to. Uh, if you don't have the oxygen capacity to build new muscle, you won't build new muscle. That said, if you're trying to do a mini marathon and you know, add size, good luck. Those, those two things are conflicting. Fundamentally, they are conflicting. Anything else, guys? Give it some little bit of time. I'm gonna chew my gum and let this uh, let these drugs hit my bloodstream, and then I'm gonna go train. So. You're welcome. How many times do you train daily with you? I don't know. I'm just because of, you know, something, but I train every day. I don't, necessarily, I don't necessarily suggest that for everybody. It's because you have to really know what the hell you're doing. And most of you do not. So training every day can be a recipe for a disaster. But if you do know what you're doing, and you know, I've been training for 14 years now, so my ability to auto-regulate my training is pretty well developed. So you can go with that. All right, guys. I'm going to go. Adios, people.